the activities of these herbal peddlers because attention for the authorities and the general public either for wrong or right reasons. We are here today to find out if certifying institutions set as the standard authority, Food and Drugs Board, the Pharmaceutical Council and the Center for Herbal Medicine of College of Education, if they come within the range of peddlers of herbal drugs in provision of check to stop the illegal one from having their way. Research shows that herbal medicine is an ancient medical system that has provided the world's population with safe, effective and affordable medicines for at least some 60,000 years. Even today, the populations of developing countries worldwide continue to rely heavily on plant medicine for their health care needs. Globally, there is now a general recognition that the medicine once described as primitive could be mankind's savior. For over two decades, the views on herbs as medicines shifted from that of witches' brew to being major medicine. In Ghana, efforts to promote traditional medicine practice started with the creation of the Ghana Psychic and Traditional Healers Association in 1961 by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. The association upholds, promotes, and protects the best in psychic and traditional healing in Ghana. The Ramfa Health Center was established in 1964 to train traditional birth attendants, TBAs, with assistance from the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. In 1975, the Center for Scientific Research into Plant Medicine, CSRPM, now Center for Research into Plant Medicine, was established at Mampon Equiapim in the Eastern Region to conduct and promote research for the improvement of phytomedicines or plant medicines, a popular method of health care in Ghana. In most instances, traditional healers are the first line of contact in the health care system in rural areas. Most patients wait and use traditional medicine before seeking help at the hospital. People buy herbal medicine without doctor's prescriptions. The traditional medicine peddlers believe their herbal have cured some diseases that orthodox medicine found difficult to cure. I can administer the same medicine to women who are looking for the fruits of the world. It was used by our grandparents long ago. We can use herbal medicine to cure stroke. Herbs are used in treating fractures. Most traditional medicines are sold on the open market. This seller explained what each medicine does. The red one is known as Aigbe blood tonic for treating anemia. This one treats candidiasis and ulcers. Those in the bottle are bitters. This is the monitor lizard used to ward off evil. The Registrar of Traditional Medicine Practice Council, TMPC, Tobiga Yakadefi, said, any herbal medicine sold on our markets without a license is unlawful and the law prohibits it. For us, any sale of herbal medicines on the markets or anywhere else other than approved facilities is unlawful and the law prohibits that. If you meet any foreigner 
who uh, sells herbal medicines or uh, maybe assess himself as to a service provider regarding traditional and authentic medicine clearly offends the law. And all such persons are required to acquire the license from the Traditional Medicine Practice Council. And in fact, the facilities are also licensed. The assistants supporting the practitioners in the service delivery are also licensed. He said it is a challenge to identify the registered pet list from quacks. The Traditional Medicine Practice Council over the years have um, been engaged in the registration or accreditation of these uh, providers. And so um, the numbers are huge and we are grappling with logistical uh, support and therefore we believe that in a very short time you would not be seeing such a uh, phenomenon. A lot of them would have been licensed. And you know the numbers keep growing. Perhaps those you see today wouldn't be the same you'll be finding tomorrow. And so we will have to be on top of our task. Mr. Yao Kwarteng from the Herbal Department of the Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, says their job is to test for the herbal concoctions for efficacy. Their mandate does not extend to unprocessed herbal products meant for consumption. When you talk of herbal medicines, um, you're talking about two different categories, okay? You're talking about um, people who are selling um, tree bags, um, pulverized tree bags, roots tied into a small knot and they are carrying it on their head, you see. That is not regulated because um, that is how the, our indigenous practice has been. And you look at the patronage, that woman or man has just enough for maybe five, two people. The moment you package the herbal products, you manufacture package for mass consumption, it comes under our mandate and we regulate it because now you have the capacity to give it on a large scale. Most peddlers our camera captured had no licenses back in their business. Our camera chanced upon a Malian selling traditional medicine. He was so confident about his words he had on his table. A document he claimed was his operating license. We could not independently verify the authenticity of the license. However, those selling unprocessed or raw herbal medicine, according to Traditional Medicine Practitioners Council, TMPC, must be licensed and regulated. If you are a genuine practitioner, you should be licensed by TMPC and GAPTRA will endorse you for TMPC. So, for you to know that the person is a genuine one, you must ask for their license from the Traditional Medicine Practice Council and whether they are members of GAPTRA. There is the need for education, but there is also the need for regulation because if people are taking something as a medicine, you cannot expect them to be buying from an open market. Um, and there are regulations which forbid that, but the regulations are not enforced. So you cannot blame the poor person who is looking for some garlic and goes to the market and so on. It is the responsibility of government, the policy makers, to make sure the sector is regulated, is pro pro properly researched, is properly studied, so that the people can use it without any um, worries at all. The regulator says it is illegal to sell medicine on vehicles. They are therefore soliciting the assistance of the media to support them to create awareness. Every FM station by now I'm sure knows what is expected of them. You do not air any advert that comes to you without being sure or making sure that the person has a certificate covering it, that this advert is approved by the FDA. FDA has a, a department that is interested in the quality of the advert. Not the aesthetic part is nice, no, but the, 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 the technical part of it. The claims you are making, is it founded? The, med, um, the, the medicine or whatever you are, you are selling, is it registered? Are we sure of the safety? So these are the things that goes into advert review. After we've done all that, we give the client a certificate to show that the advert has been approved. The content is known and it is not harmful to the public. 
Then he comes to your FM station. It is your duty to make sure that the advert that he's presenting has been approved, vetted, approved by the FDA. It is an offense to air an unapproved advert. According to the Pharmaceutical Council, herbal medicine, whether processed or not, must be prescribed. Drugs are chemicals, whether they are from natural sources or from through organic synthesis. So they must be sold under conditions that will maintain their safety, their quality and efficacy. So the Pharmacy Council will want to ensure that any product described as medicine, whether herbal or orthodox, is sold under those prescribed conditions. Reverend Jonathan Marty urged consumers to buy medicine from licensed pharmacies. Drugs are not uh, products of ordinary commerce. You cannot sell drugs without providing the requisite information for the consumer. When to take it, how to take it, and for how long the medicine can be used once it gets into the hand of the patient. So the Pharmacy Council conducts regular inspection of premises that are licensed to sell medicines to ensure that one, the person or persons offering the medicine for sale are registered under the law to do so. And secondly, whether they are practicing what is considered to be good pharmaceutical care. So with respect to the display of medicines for sale, any medicine sold outside licensed premises is considered illegal. And the public must not patronize. Because you see, medicines, much as we take them to alleviate our symptoms, also come with side effects. It is important that you buy medicines from places where you can go back. Should there be any problem, you can go back to, to the premises and then let the pharmacist know that I took this medicine that I bought from here and I have these conditions. Ghana Federation of Traditional Medicine Practitioners Association, GAFRAM, is an umbrella body and the mouthpiece of over 40,000 traditional medicine practitioners in Ghana. Another branch of healing is the psychic healers. They use herbs to set bones of fractured patients. Practitioners say it will be prudent if we have a minister in charge of herbal medicine. I'm not being ambitious if we ask for a minister eh, in charge of traditional medicine because traditional medicine has been overshadowed with allopathic medicine. Today, it has been made evident that there are actual preparations which can be made with traditional medicines, which can treat diseases which are, we are prohibited from advertising. You see, so with the minister, he can delve into the whole thing with a political will so that there will be all those uh, preparations you're asking for, for some diseases which are prohibited from announcing on public that we can treat. The Member of Parliament for Insawem Adwejiri, Mr. Frank Anodompre, also presented a statement on the role and importance of traditional medicine. He entreated government to help herbal medicine practitioners to improve their businesses. Having come this far, even to the level of integrating and synchronizing the clinical herbal medicine practice into the main healthcare delivery system in Ghana since 2012, it is important that we, en we ensure full enforcement and strict compliance of laws regulating traditional herbal medicine practice. I strongly suggest and advocate also that cost of services of traditional herbal medicine practitioners are absorbed or covered by the National Health Insurance Scheme as most patients who patronize their services are card bearing members and unable to afford payments. As government seeks to strengthen the NHIS, this call is well placed and timely. It is unfortunate that these service providers in the health delivery sector are left out. Regulation of herbal drugs and herbal medicine remains a problem. Consumers make decisions based on rigorous media campaigns 
which Trump pets the one cure for all diseases mantra. Dr. Kofi Buzia emphasized that if a plant is well prepared, it can heal more than one disease, but it is always not the case. Now you take a plant, a plant has about 100 chemicals. Each of the chemicals has a role to play. So if somebody tells me I'm using a plant for diarrhea and it's also good for constipation or whatever, I will believe it as a scientist because I know where they are coming from. But to the lay person, you would think, how can one plant treat about? But having said that, there's also sometimes exaggeration. You know, they will tell you they can treat well, death, basically. When a lot of the time, it's nothing more than just hype. You know, because don't forget, we also have businessmen. You know, not everybody is a healer. Some people are just out there to make money. But in general, a plant can, if it's properly prepared, can treat more than one disease. It is possible because they contain more than one chemical. And each chemical has its functions and so on. Some experts have documented their thoughts into books. One such book is Fundamentals of Herbal Medicine by Dr. Buzia. The book gives an overview of some indigenous medical system and also outlines the basic concept of medicinal drugs. It's expected to guide traditional medical practitioners and students to evaluate the pharmacological activities of plant extract. This book will serve as a learning and reference point to most traditional medicines practitioners in Ghana. One of the complaints about herbal medicine is the fact that it's not scientific. Um, the dosages are not standardized. Um, they are manufactured under very terrible conditions and so on and so forth. What this book is trying to do is to say, yes, all these things might be true, but there are processes. There, there have been well-grounded research into a number of the plants we use to validate the claims that the herbalists make. So it's not completely true that there is no science. I mean, if you want to read around it, you will find that there is science. So this book has put all this information together to dispel the notion um, about the area not being scientific. There are multiple factors influencing patient decisions to access traditional medicine. These factors include religion, traditional culture, financial consideration, education, advice of family and friends, and introduction of Western systems. Some people say they resort to the use of herbal medicine because of affordability. To me, I believe in uh, the herbal medicine. Uh, when you when you reach some certain age, there's no, you know, you have to use herbal medicine because the orthodox medicines contain so many chemicals. You understand what I'm saying? So, to me, I believe in uh, the herbal medicine. So, I think the government has to blend the herbal medicine and then the octopus medicine so that when they diagnose you, they will know what the medicine, either the herba or the octodos. So that is, I believe on it. Media in can be drone in the in can yepa at the Maya before. Nemum standard board for so standard board authority needs to regulate the activities of herbal medicine practitioners and sellers since they are good for us. Drona, a be more basic problems near the end. Sanya money in a to be trapped. It is a standard board for your money. I think, say, a be drone in the that is the best. Though herbal medicine is good, a lot of people use it to treat diseases. Herbal medicine producers have to work on their packaging. Presentation to attract more customers. That's far. Ghana is the only country which is able to meet the WHO standard for the herbal medicine sector. You know, I work for the region, the sub region of 15 countries. In fact, I've been to, from Kiver all the way to Nigeria. I know all the countries, and I'm responsible for traditional medicine for all these countries. Ghana is way ahead. In fact, we are the only country that has been able to meet the WHO standards for the herbal medicine sector. We have training institutions, we have research centers, we have regulatory bodies, and so on and so forth. The, we have the, one of the most powerful 
traditional medicine association is in the form of Gatram here. They are well united and so on. So we are doing very well, but there's still a lot to be done uh, because the people want, they want their herbal medicines. Um, but I think we as scientists, producers, healers and so on, should be in a position to be able to help them so that what we put in the market is something safe, it's of quality, and you can take without any problems whatsoever. A cross-section of the populace view herbal medicine as a viable alternative to orthodox drugs. Indeed, the practice of traditional medicine in Ghana, which dates back to the pre-colonial era, has continued to strive. Experts say patrons should buy from authorized agents. Here's a little song I wrote, you might want to sing it.